first of all, it's posh top to be wearing. So thank you to us, O oh Lord. He sent me this, O oh Lord of London. Though he's he's uh, made me Lord of London. <laughs> I don't, don't know, but that's his shop. He's a, a jeweler, and he, he loves the channel. And uh, no, I think you've uh, guys have probably seen him before. He put a very kind comments up on his channel. So check out his channel, uh, Lords. Uh, he's he's got a, a bubble arch mark one as well. But his main thing is is a jeweler. He's a very, very clever fella, so check him out. And if you're in London, go check out his shop. So today's challenge is make the underside of the Escort white. So I've got myself some uh, two-pack paint, Ford Ermine White. And uh, it's from Auto Paints in Plasma, which is a local paint shop. Now, I've not tried sp uh, spraying two-pack before. I've always been nervous of it. I know it's pretty dangerous stuff. It gives off cyanide as it's curing. So uh, I'm going to be careful not to kill myself, so I'm going to have plenty of ventilation. I've got a fan on going. <coughs> um, I've also got my version of an air fed mask. I made this a few years ago. It's made from one of those full, full face shield snorkeling masks. I, have, uh, I did manage to spill a bit of paint on the front of it <laughs> back in the day, which is etched into it. But the uh, idea of this, <coughs> I made a... 3D printed adapter which fits onto the top of it so I can then feed that with air from my compressor via a, a little um, regulator and then a TP switch then goes off to my spray gun. So I've used this in the past to paint, to paint with ordinary paints and my compressor takes its air from outside so I know the air coming to me will be clean, fresh and safe. First challenge I got is to have a tidy up in the garage so you'll see behind all sorts of uh, me uh, show the state of the place. I've been painting up with the chassis black. The uh, all the chassis bits, just cleaning them off and giving them a coat of paint. Uh, the old axle, as you've seen on previous video, I've painted that up, and generally made a right mess in the garage. So my first challenge, which I won't film and I won't bore you stupid with, is have a good tidy up in here, get everything out of the way, so I'm not tripping over stuff, and get the car back up on its side again. Then we'll mix the paints up and uh, give it a whirl, see how, it's, how it goes. It's a bit better, a bit of space to walk around now. So this is the idea, is to paint this sort of up to sort of this level. I'm not going to worry about inside the engine bay for now, because the engine is going to be in and out while we mock up. But if I can get the underside painted, I can start bolting stuff on and it can start staying there. The back panel, I'm not going to worry too much about this area here. That's why I didn't bother gravitexing it or worrying too much about it because I'm still unsure what's going to happen with the back panel, whether I'm going to have to replace all of it or we'll just repair what we got until I get it back off the jig and on the ground and on its wheels. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to that bridge. So let's mix up some paint and see what we got. There's all my uh, freshly painted suspension y stuff. So it's a uh, it's a nice, nice part of the build, this. You start doing stuff that's going to stay on the car. And interestingly, I asked the guys at um, Plasma Isle Paint Shop, there's a guy there who's very knowledgeable about Mark 1 Escorts, about the Colin Axle, and he reckons, although unpopular, they're okay. So I probably will start off with that axle, see what happens. If I break it, then I'll, I'll make up an, uh, um, an English axle to go on there. So a bit of a test bed, really. See... How good or how bad they are. You may recognise that. It came off the gearbox, a bit of chopped off. I told you I'd find a job for it. Perfect. Nice hardened pin. Perfect for my safety pin for there. All right, door open. As you can see, it's doing the usual Welsh weather out there. There's a nice breeze coming through. I do have a fan up there, but I don't think I'm going to need it because there's plenty of a there's, a... there's a perfect breeze just coming through the garage. So Windows are both wide open. Not that you can see them very much. So that should give us ventilation between that and my homemade mask. We should be safe. So let's start mixing up these paints. Now they very kindly did put on here the mixes. So it's two to one reactivator. Yeah, something's leaking me. Mm, lovely. So what's leaking? That. 
Mm, I don't think it's that. Maybe it's all. Oh, it might be that. Let me activate the. Excellent. Okay, that's all over my hands now. Oh, right, I clean those up. Get some gloves on, and let's see about mixing this up. Got the measuring cups. They're all Halfords again to the rescue. I use those to uh, measure out. So two of those to one of those, and uh, happy days. But uh, chopped up a lemonade bottle. Put a bit of a mesh on the top. I know it's not a proper filters, but I'm, I'm kind of practicing at this for, for at this stage. A bit of dust in the in the bottom of the car. It's not going to matter. It's got a um, gravel text fish finish on it anyway. So the idea is to measure it into there. I've made a divot on the side of one of these to give me a ten percent to put the thinners in. Let's mix it up and see what it goes like. And then I got my uh, Parkside Aldi special gunder to throw it on with. So. Let's open it up, see what we got. I've got plenty of nice through draft here, so I'm uh, safe from the fumes for the moment. Let's give that a good, good mixer root. The other downside to two-pack paint is once you've activated it, you've got to use it. So there's no, uh, there's no storing it. It's another, another reason why I've always been reluctant to use it. But it is the future. It is a better paint. So I just got to get on with it and start using this stuff. Right, mixing the paint down all the sides, get really good mix on here. What I really need is a proper scale so I can measure this out properly. When I come to painting the car, prop, you know, eventually, I'll probably get some proper scales and proper filters and, and all the proper doodars for it. A lovely colour. So I'm just going to mix up small bits at a time to see how I get on with it and then uh, see how far it goes. I don't want to mix up too much then it goes to waste. Uh, I mean it's just dunk it in I guess. <laughs> Perfect. Yes this is going to make a mess. I should have put some cardboard as my down first. <laughs> See, you need fancy equipment and you can just potch about like this. You know, just stick that on there for a second. I like find somewhere to put that in. Oh, there are. This whole cardboard, cardboard box again. Maybe the receipt which is ruined. This will be a fair bit runnier. Oh yes, a lot runnier in fact. Why you need 10% thinners because that's going to thin it out enormously. Okay, let's put that over one side out the way. And give this a whirl. Now in hindsight, this bottle might not have been a good idea because it's got all funny shapes on the bottom of it. You get, <laughs> you get the paint around. Uh, in my reckoning, that's not far off the consistency to paint it to, to spray. And when I've painted the this one, maybe you're sort of looking for a, a sort of a thin cream, if that makes sense. So, a single cream, th slightly thinned out single cream effect. Not, so, you don't, not quite the consistency of milk, but just a touch thicker. I think that's going to be a million miles off. I might do. We just chuck a bit of 
Well, let's measure the thinners in there first and then uh, see what we get. Oh yeah, I'd say that's probably about not far off there. Right, let's give that a good mix. What I didn't ask him in the uh, shop is how long I've got to use this. <laughs> it's a lovely colour. I reckon that's probably going to be enough just to chuck on the underside. For one coat at least. First layer on, what I have learned quite quickly is this stuff likes to run. Even though I've mixed it up fairly thickly, you can see it's not, not the spray pattern wasn't fantastic, but I've already got a bit of run going on underneath there and along there. I'm obviously, not worried about because underneath the cast so is good practice for me. So, what I have learned already is laid on thinly. So, you see, there it's, it's, it's a lot thinner there. Then, it, then I was starting off with so laying it on thinly then coming back over it again afterwards seems to be the way to go so even there look to spread those out some runs going all over the place here but it's not too bad it's not the nicest stuff to paint with I've got to be honest I prefer the old cellulose paint but you can't get it and Everybody hates it these days. But I shall persevere and mix up my next batch now and crack on again. Right, I have just had a go at brushing it. Um, just to go with the corners, I couldn't get to with a spray gun. And it actually brushes quite nicely, so what I might do is mix up a patch uh, when this is set off a little bit and go around all the little nooks and crannies with the brush. 
just to, to, to make sure they're fully covered. So that's good news. That's, that's an advantage over cellulose because cellulose is a nightmare. Once you tried to brush it, once you got one stroke on, it would set so fast that you wouldn't get another stroke on it. You just keep peeling it, I just make an almighty mess. So that's interesting news. I might uh, have a play with that in a minute. It's starting to look quite tidy. I'm going to show you what I found with brush painting this stuff. It goes on with a brush very nicely. In fact, I think I prefer brush painting it than I do spraying it. So what it would be like on a smooth surface is another thing, but on the gravity, on this uh, Gravitex surface, you can just sort of stipple it around like this and happy days, on it goes. And it's going on at a reasonable density as well. So as you know, it's covering nicely. Right, I'm not sure whether this, how well this will come up on camera, but along there, you can see how the spray wasn't really giving it the coverage, but how the color is really coming out nicely with a bit of brushing down it on there to get the, get the density up. And it's going on really nice and it pulls it, skins itself back so the brush marks aren't so bad. So I'm wondering when it comes to doing the rest of the car, Definitely the inter inside I'm going to brush paint. Practice on that and try try rollers and stuff as well and see how that comes. And give that a whirl, I think, when it comes to doing the inside. You see over here as well. Watch how that, how this goes on. See, has quite some heavy brush marks in that, but quickly those brush marks have disappeared. And you can, to a certain extent, go back over yourself a little bit with it. And even get into little nooks and crannies, but the spray mist as well. So, all in all, my findings are I don't really like spraying it, but I do like brush painting it. And I'm the opposite with an enamel. I find enamels spray nicer than they brush paint, which is probably opposite way around to how it should be. <laughs> and the professionals will probably disagree with me and tell me I'm talking nonsense and that's fine because I'm not a professional but this is working if it works it ain't stupid and I'm, I'm literally just slapping it on as well I'm not being particularly careful with it but it's just it's pulling back nicely and I appreciate it's on the Gravitex surface so that obviously is a difference but interesting to see how this is going to pan out and the other advantage to using it out in a brush is you haven't got an overspray going all over the place, which you try not to breathe in. So, win-win, really. Now, I've mixed this as well with just the activator and the paint, so there's no thinners in it, but it's about the right consistency like that for brush painting. You notice I am not wearing my mask anymore, but I have, like I said, there's a nice through draft going on here, so also means I'm going to be able to get nice up behind this lip here, which the spray wasn't getting to.
a bacon sandwich. Right, coffee break over. Crack on with it. <clears throat> Wonder what it would like. It would be like a roller. I might dig out an old uh, bonnet. I've still got it from the pop. And have a play with that. And see what it's like. But that'll be another video. aren't particularly expensive brushes these are sort of pound shop specials so they were really good quality brushes you probably get an even better finish if this does roll nicely it'd be an answer to many because most don't have spraying equipment and this stuff is horrible to spray mostly because of the stuff it gives off and it could be an alternative to rust, though, William. Because that's what everybody uses when they're a roller painting their cars. Mostly because it's cheap. But if this will roller and get a nice finish on it, it'll be win-win. I don't see why not. If it brushes on like that. Well, because if that's, oh, you'll see that on the camera, the wrong angle. The bit I've just done there, just slap it on with a paintbrush and it's pulled back nicely. Thanks again for sticking with another one. Looks rather fetching in ermine white, quite pleased with that. Um, so the lessons we've learned, or I've learned along the way here and hopefully I can pass on, is you don't need a spray kit to, to paint the 2K paint. So that's, that's good news, it will brush paint very nicely. With it a roller, we'll come back to that as a future episode, I think that's definitely worth attempting to try that. But that's gone on really nice, just all the hassle I have with a, with a spray gun. That's probably mostly down to having a cheap, nasty spray gun, and I don't really have very much experience with spraying, so it's, it's I sort of make that up as I go along. But if I'd have realised I should have tried the paint, the brush first, if I'm honest, and um, if I'd have realised how well it brush, brushed on, I'd have stuck with that. And as I said in the video, I, I, when I, in the past when I've tried to brush, like cellulose paint, that's been impossible. It'll brush on and it almost it sets almost as fast as you're brushing it on and it, it, it just it's just becomes an almighty nightmare. But this has got a, a longer setting time and the brush lines pull out very nicely, a bit like coach paint does, so very pleased with that. So thank you for watching. Don't forget the car show, May the first is Singleton in Swansea. Uh hopefully the car will be there. I'm uh, trying to organise that so that'll be good. And uh, what, I, what I really would have liked to have done is got the car there on the whole rollover jig, but I don't think that's going to be viable. But uh, hopefully we can get it on its wheels and get it there. Uh, but I, I'll be there as long as the weather's nice. I'm, I am a fair weather classic car guy. I don't like, like taking classics out in, in the rain and muddy fields. So as long as it's a nice day, I'll definitely be there. And there's a, there's a few there as well. There's a, there's a chap coming, Matthew. He's got uh, a couple of... Beetles, we've got a T2 coming, got the, hopefully this, might let MX-5 be there. I was hoping to get the Manta ready, but you know, it's a bit of bad news on the Manta front. I went to posh about with it the other day and broke the windscreen, so, so that was great news. I pulled the windscreen out anyway, and all around the windscreen scuttle and an aperture is quite bad. So my hopes of that being a rolling restoration are fading. Right, thanks again for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe and hit the likes and comment and tell me what you think especially about um, the brush painting if anybody else has had experience of brush painting 2k or rolling it and working with it any tips and tricks on that front would be fantastic I want to touch it.
<laughs> Lovely. Look, it's still a shiny.